Virgo, it's I'm Omega Tarot and this is your November Tarot card reading. I'm going to use the theme card to see what, what's popping up, what topics are popping up for Virgos this month. And yeah, let's do a tarot spread after that. All right, give the video a like if you, if you like the sound of my voice and wish to hear from me again. Give the video a like if you like the reading. And here we go. Second house, this is your assets, finances, and the things you value. You know what it is. You know what it is. Because every Virgo has their certain thing that they care about as far as possessions or the way their home's set up. Very particular. It's because you're an earth sign. So the second house of finances, this is ruled by a fellow earth sign, Taurus. So yeah, home, house of finance, your house of finance, finance, assets, like that's your job, your earnings, your business transactions. Your your I feel like it's the, the possessions represent the thing like a lifestyle, a thing like your chain, like your car, like your house. What's where, what city you live in? But this all kind of circulates and touches money. So we're talking money this month, all right? We have the ninth house, broadening your horizons, either spiritually, academically, or on a long journey. Good for you good for you good for you times 100 virgo because some of you i guess are feeling that itch you need to upgrade expand the knowledge take a course take a workshop better job more money some of you guys want to broaden your horizons and if you're not actively doing it this month you're curious your curiosity is at an all-time high you're inquiring you're looking you're searching you're asking you're networking good then we have the, oh then we have the sixth house right at home so this is the work health and duty area of your life i like it virgo it's very it's a very practical thing that's your thing being practical but it feels like you're just trying to broaden your eyes you're trying to think about how your money's going how to expand on that how your health's going how to expand on that how your work life's going the balance how's everything going and I think that it's not surprising considering we're heading into a new year. So some of you are really trying to organize yourselves as far as your goals for the next year. So some of you have health, fitness goals. Some of you guys have money goals. Y'all are focused. Because a lot of people are, are focused more on love and relationships. But you guys want to be your best self. And that could be for a relationship. But let's have a look and see what's going on. Um, in November as far as the tarot goes. All right, so first card, okay? You're, oh, look at that. It's kind of an interesting, you know, card to come up. The death card associated with Scorpio. This is transformation. It's death, it's rebirth. It's the cycle of life. End, beginning, end, beginning. Lost my house, moving to an apartment. Apartment life cycle. Got a better job, bought a house. House life cycle. It's about the cycles we're in and it feels like there's some cycle coming to an end, some cycle starting. All right, very sensitive and it hits very deeply because of the association with Scorpio and the depth of that watery energy. And of course, death is a heavy subject matter, whether it's a person, whether it's an experience. It's, it, the Scorpio indicates it's just something that is very, it's not like, oh yeah, I had, there was a fruit fly that was living in my kitchen a couple hours and then it died. Uh, really torn up about it. It's like, no, like, it's deep. Deeper than that. So, you guys are dealing with endings. And I'm wondering, I kind of want to, let's pull the, the, the spread, but I, I do want to go in on the, the, de the, the depth of the death card. Wait, oh, you want to fly out? You want to get flued out? Okay. So then we have the Queen of the Ocean, which is also known as the Empress card. And then the Fool in reverse. We have Conflict, and then we have the Knight of Wands. So it's interesting. Half of this reading is Major Arcana, big themes. Which, okay, because we're already dealing with depth. And so we can see the Empress, who is associated with Venus, Pleasure, luxury, contentment, fulfillment, joy. You know, it's in reverse. So it feels like 
there's either the death of this like maternal energy so that energy would be very nurturing uh, the death of some support that you have and that could mean you know actually a little less hope not but like more more so like just the, the death of the energy of what is felt when you think of somebody who is nurturing um, somebody who is you know usually co calm collected and cool and has an abundant um, and it might be that the end of that type of energy in your life a cycle of rebirth in in that in that area of your life just being comfortable complacent some of you um, I think that maybe because this death is in reverse and maybe because this empress queen of the ocean is in reverse it might be something that you brought on yourself so it may not be as surprising or as you know shocking as it normally is with the death card popping up it uh, feels like at the end is to gain the beginning it's like looking right into death and wanting something to end um either with a i guess it could be venus so taurus libra I also get gemini vibes from queen of the ocean for some reason um but the queen of the ocean is supposed to be that calm collected person but this person is in in a uh, in reverse so the archetype would be like like a mother figure who is pretending that they're not you know financially burdened or somebody who's like trying to act like they have all of it but they don't really um so it just feels like there's a cycle the end of that cycle pretending the end of the cycle of of acting like whatever it is the whatever the abundance is in their life is real it's coming to an end and they're having to start over and we get that the sense that they're having to start over um from scratch just I know, and we don't even have the tower card and we can think that oops let me back it up we thought back it up is it back up? okay here we go so the fool is showing like new beginnings right so also associated with aquarius energy also this individualistic energy it feels like there's a new cycle beginning i feel like it's self-imposed it feels like you know taking a risk and jumping off and not knowing how this is going to go but i'm going to take the risk but also there's a little bit of like maybe impulsiveness to it just because this card is in reverse and then we have our queen of wands just wanting to be comfortable so wanting to be cozy wanting to be abundant giving get get rich quick scheme giving pyramid scheme type of energy when you try to dive off into something before you do your research before you fully investigate before and it comes out of nowhere usually it doesn't have a reputation it's just randomly some person's like have you heard about this random opportunity but you know as far as if you feel frustrated you know if you see the end of something you might have to go for whatever because you're in a fit of desperation or need to find a new job quickly and so just be cautious of anything that is like too good to be true or those like all day meetings that some of those interviewers will have you in um the feeling of comfortability and abundance the feeling of complacency is something that sits with you and that you like you just want to be back to normal um even if you've initiated this this ending or this this cycle change and if you didn't initiate this cycle change i feel like you know a little research a little more research even though because you know sometimes you, you got to do a lot to get your employment insurance and then if you get into something that you don't like and that interrupts your employment insurance and you can't really quit and you're like oh this isn't a match for me and you have to stick with it because employment insurance but um we see five of swords potential for conflict potential for having to cut ties and walk away that might even be why the energy the, the thing that like stands out to you because it's what you're afraid of given the last instance of having to do that cut your losses is the is the theme of this card five of swords and it's five it's number five and five is a number of change and unexpected change as well so some of you guys are for i guess this month some of you guys are going through like a, a feeling of something coming to an end and wanting to pivot and transition to something new the feeling of complacency you, that's almost like something that you admit to yourself but i also think that there's just some some power in the empress of of that that imagery of being abundant and just relaxing while other people do the work and other people worry and other people it's in reverse it's like it's almost like you have to move you have to keep it moving you can't you can't hang up the boots you got to keep it keep the hustle keep the grind going um to get where you want to go if you're especially if you're diving into the unknown and you don't know how it's going to go at all you got to try your hardest in terms of effort um cut the losses maybe kind of cut some fat 
no bed rotting, <laughs> get to work, take that action. Um, but also just like cut your losses. If somebody is not wishing you well, if somebody is, is in your way, somebody is negative energy, you're going to have to like put a fork in it because it's done. And if you remember in other decks, the five of swords, it's like this person's reluctantly having to cut their losses. So I always go, Hey, if you don't have to cut it off permanently, you could just, Hey, take a step back, take a pause, take a pause and just take your, reclaim your time, reclaim your time. Cause the conflict is distracting. You're already heading into a sea of the unknown. Plus, hey, if you've been dealing with a big change, a big transition, and people aren't supporting and helping, and they're getting kind of like in your way, even if it's unintentional, it's kind of like for you to just manage what you can handle, what you can't handle, right? So then we have the Knight of Wands. There's that action. There's that action I was talking about. There's that boogie that you need to have in order to get up and get some stuff done and be productive as you normally are. And I think that you're going to do that. The Knight of Wands is that young, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed energy that's going out looking for a job. I think that you guys are, some of you workers are looking for what's out there. How can I get more? How can I level up to the lifestyle that I want? I want to get my money right. It's, it's it's cute. It's real cute how the cup stayed away from this reading. They're like, nah, we know. This person needs to upgrade through education. The nine of, nine, ninth house. Get some letters next to your name. Take a course. Maybe that's that'll help with the networking. Diving into the unknown. The more you know, the more people you talk to, the more experiences you get to exchange with people, the more intel. It's a very, it's a very Virgo positive type vibe because the Virgo is associated with the hermit in tarot. And as you know, the hermit likes to observe people with a notebook. Not participate, but let me see how people act. And when they're in the same situations as me or situations I hope to be in in the future, let me see how they behave. And then they do that for a long period of time. Take the notes, observe, observe the intel, lightly position themselves for participation. And then they're out to go resume their normal lives with the people that they ran away from. And be what? prosperous wiser okay so take a step back from people when you need to do your thing you need to get in on that action you need to actually actively study focus you know your mind needs to be somewhere else and this is all it's just your work life your money so it feels like you need to upgrade it, or at least start thinking about it start planning out your future your next year um and kind of evaluate relationships and and not even like be like oh who's getting the cut it's like more like, okay, I have a clear goal and I have a clear energy that I want to be in during the pursuit of this goal. Um, and until I get there, if I have somebody who makes me feel like goo and then it puts me out for the day or like I have to take a nap to reset, that's wasted valuable time. I'm afraid you're going to have to be on mute. Okay. Just anything for prosperity and productive productivity because... Virgos can get hard on themselves and then just kind of throw up their hands in the air and be like, forget it. It's all messed up. I'm done. Uh, you know. So you want to keep the activity going. You want to keep learning. You want to keep asking why. You want to keep curious. And yeah, I feel like that's 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 it for your month. Just keep at it. Keep um, whatever the death thing is, whatever is coming to an end, just be excited about the beginning that's coming because it's a new paradigm. It's a new day. I actually don't know that song, so I shouldn't even start it. But um, potential for good things to happen, great. It's like it's like when you get a house and you gotta go in there and cut the grass and it's kind of gross and you gotta get rid of the raccoon carcass. And it's kind of gross, but it's like, hey, you got a new house. Get on it. Get that action. You love you love the similes. You love the metaphors. Um, but yeah, there it is. That's your reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my Etsy shop where I sell candles, fragrance oils, and gemstones. You name it, I got it. But not actually. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.